What's going on guys? I'm Brian and today I'm going to show you guys how to bring down your Ryzen 3000 temperatures without impacting your performance. That's right. You're not going to impact your performance by doing this. Well, at least like not negatively, you might actually gain some performance from this. And I know this was something that drove me nuts when I first got my first Ryzen 3000 series chip. And I've actually had quite a few questions from you guys about it. There are going to be two methods or at least two methods that I found out about and both are super easy and it will only take a few minutes to show you guys. Now keep in mind that there are a couple trade-offs in one of the methods we'll be talking about today. So make sure you watch the entire video because at the end of the video, I'll be talking about those trade-offs and as always everything I talk about today all the programs I talk about today they're gonna be in the description box below so for this tutorial I'm using my newly picked up Ryzen 5 3600 the stock cooler at the stock fan curve and the MSI B450 Tomahawk Max motherboard now if you have a different um, 3000 series chip or a different motherboard these methods should still work for you the voltages may be a little bit different and you may have to tweak it a little bit more but you should still be able to improve your temperatures with the method Methods we go over today. So the first thing we're going to want to do is get a baseline, something that you can use to compare before and after we make our modifications. And in particular, we're going to want a temperature baseline. Well, of course, that's what we're trying to lower. And then also a CPU benchmarking score of some sort. I like to use HW info um, to record and track the temperature. And then I like to use Cinebench R20 um, to get us a CPU benchmarking score that we can track as we go through the motions. And as I just said, the reason why we're gathering this data is to make sure our temperatures are dropping while our performance is either staying the same or at least going up a little bit. All right, so along with the programs I just mentioned, so that's Cinebench R20 and then our HW Info, you're gonna also need a stress testing program for the second method we talk about today. And I like to use ADA64. All the programs are free except ADA64, which has a free trial period. It's like 30 days, so you can just download it for this and then you can just delete it. And as I said before, all of the links will be in the description box below to help make your guys' lives a little bit easier. Now, after downloading all of the programs I just mentioned, go ahead and open HW info, click yes on the permissions window pop up, then hit the little checkbox that says sensors only, and then hit run. This screen is going to pop up. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to scroll down until you see the part of the program that says CPU TCTL T die. This is the temperature that we want to monitor for our testing. After you have that temperature located, go ahead and open Cinebench R20. And once it loads, click file and then hit advanced benchmark. What this is going to do is allow us to either run the single core test or the multi-core test. And we wanna use both of them today. So it's important that you click on that little box. So now that we have that done, go ahead and hit the top run button. That's gonna be for the multi-core test and you're gonna let it run through. Then what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and jot down that score on a piece of paper and then also jot down the corresponding maximum temperature. That's the CPU TCTL slash T die temperature. And now that you have that, go ahead, jump into HW info again. And at the very bottom, you're gonna see a little clock. And what this little clock does is it resets your results. So once you have hit the reset button, go ahead and run the single core test as well. And the single core test takes a lot longer to run. So you have a ton of free time. Now you can go ahead and do whatever else you might have to do in the house or go mow the lawn or whatever. Um, it's not like a super long time, but it is a good amount of time. So once that has been completed, you're going to want to do the same exact thing. Jot down the, you know, the Cinebench score as well as your maximum temperature um, for that run. And those four numbers are going to be your baseline numbers. So those are the numbers that we're going to compare everything that we do today to, to make sure that we're getting positive results. Now that we actually have our baseline information, what we're going to do, need to do is get into our BIOS so that we can actually improve these temperatures, right? There are going to be two ways to do this. Both are super easy, but it's going to really be up to what your preference is and how you actually get into the BIOS. The easiest way, in my opinion, is going to be to restart your PC and start tapping the delete key while your system restarts. As your system reboots, what happens is as soon as it realizes that you're tapping that delete key, um, it just throws you right into the BIOS and it's as simple as that. The other way is also pretty easy, um, but it's going to take a little bit longer to do just because you have to click on a couple of things you have to go through Windows to do it. Um, so what you're going to do is you're gonna, again, you're going to need to be in Windows to do it. And what you're going to do is hit the start button. Then you're going to click the settings or that little gear icon that pops up. You're going to scroll down to update and security. And on the left hand side of the window that pops up when you click update and security, you're gonna see recovery. And don't worry, you're not gonna lose any data by doing this. Go ahead and scroll down until you see 
advanced startup and click on the restart now button in that section. This is going to restart your PC and throw you into a screen that looks like this. Now go ahead and hit the troubleshoot button, then advance option button. Lastly, hit the UEFI firmware settings button, and then you're going to click restart. And after doing all of that, it's going to restart your PC and it's going to throw you into your BIOS. Now that we're in the BIOS, the rest of the process is actually pretty straightforward. And there is a good chance that your BIOS will look a little bit different than mine. The important thing is that all the settings are going to be basically the same. There are going to be two paths that we can take here. As I mentioned before, there's two methods to decrease your temperature. The first method is easier, but it's only going to improve your temperatures by eight to 10 degrees Celsius. At least that's what I noticed when I did my testings. Second method takes a little bit more time, but it will improve your temperatures by up to 20 C at least again from what I um, got from when I did my testing and both of them will require you to enter advanced mode. So go ahead and do so on MSI and ASUS boards. All you gotta do is press F7 on gigabyte. I think it's F2 and on ASRock, I'm pretty sure you don't have to do anything. It just throws you right into their advanced mode or their, their standard normal mode. So for the first method, get into the advanced mode as we just talked about. And then we need to go find the voltage settings on the MSI motherboards and on this Tomahawk in the particular, um, what you're gonna have to do is click on the OC tab. And then this screen right here is gonna pop up. You're gonna scroll down until you see core voltage or V core. I'm not sure what it'll say in your BIOS. And what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna switch this from auto mode to offset mode. And if you have a gigabyte board, you're gonna have to switch it to a normal mode and then it, it'll let you, you it'll let you change like the offset values. On MSI boards, two additional boxes are gonna pop up after you switch it to offset mode. And the first box is gonna determine whether you wanna add voltage or subtract voltage from your CPU. And the second box is gonna be how much would you like to actually offset your voltage by. And depending on which chip you have, I would actually suggest starting off at a negative 0 0.05 volt offset. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and save this, move back into Windows, and then you're gonna open up HW Info as well as Cinebench R20, rerun both tests, so the multi-core test and the single core test, and then you're gonna record the results back onto your piece of paper. After you have recorded the results, um, you're gonna jump back into your BIOS. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna increase your negative voltage offset. So if I start off at negative 0 0.05, you might try negative 0 0.075 next. And then you're gonna go back into Windows, you're gonna retest it, and you're gonna rinse and repeat until you see a performance drop in Cinebench. Then once you see that performance drop, you're gonna go back into your BIOS and you're gonna bring it down. So if, so if you see a performance drop at negative 0 0.08, you're gonna go back into your BIOS and you're gonna change it to maybe negative 0 0.06. And that's it. You're done with the offset mode. For the 3600, I found that I couldn't subtract more than 0 0.075 volts. So I couldn't have a larger uh, off negative offset than negative 0 0.075 volts without losing performance. And then on the 3700X and the 3900X, I found that I couldn't subtract more than negative 0.1 volts without losing performance. And this is on the MSI Tomahawk motherboard. Your motherboard might be a little bit different as I said earlier. I know it sounds kind of weird because you would expect chips with more cores would need more voltage, but with the Ryzen 3000 series chips, that's just not the case. The um, the 3700X and the 3900X have just been a little bit better. And like I said before, this method, you should see a decrease of about eight to 10 degrees Celsius. It's not a ton, but it's a pretty big difference for just, you know, bringing your voltage down and not impacting anything else. Now for method two, what we're going to need to do is get back into the BIOS and then we're going to go into the voltage screen again. And now what we're basically going to be doing for these chips is we're essentially overclocking and then under volting the CPU which sounds totally like it's baffling right it's so weird like why would that bring down the temperatures that makes no sense shouldn't that be, be bringing like up the temperatures well without boring you guys too much the 3000 series chips get more voltage than they actually need when you have it set to stock and unfortunately when you use the offset method that we just talked about the auto boosting feature on the chips will basically start freaking out if you give it too high of a negative offset. So like for me, the 3600 started freaking out when I had a negative 0.1 volt offset, the performance totally tanked. And so it'll keep the chip from boosting higher and then you end up losing performance, which is exactly what we don't want. We wanna bring temperatures down while keeping the, as much performance as we can, or even maybe even bringing the performance up. To prevent this, what we basically need to do is overclock your chip while bringing the voltages down to 
where they should be and all we really need to do is worry about two settings and that's going to be your cpu ratio and your core voltage on um, which we already messed around with if you did the first method and what we're doing is setting them to static values so what you're going to need to do is you're going to find your cpu ratio and then i like to start at 40 which is four gigahertz then you're going to scroll down to your core voltage and you're going to switch it to override or manual mode instead of offset mode and i would recommend starting your voltage off around 1.25 volts and then you're going to work your way down so you're gonna bring it down to 1.2 volts 1.15 volts and so forth so once you set your cpu ratio to 40 um and you set your core voltage to 1.25 volts go ahead and save your bios exit it and then go back into windows you're gonna open up hw info run cinebench r20 single core and multi-core test and then you're gonna record all of your data after you recorded the data that you need go back into your bios lower your voltage by 0 0.01 and then you're gonna rinse and repeat until your pc doesn't load or it randomly crashes or reboots during a test or something like that and yes i know it could be scary but don't worry it's not going to do anything to your system i've had it happen to me millions of times in my career of playing with pcs and then once you see that crash go into your bios and what you're going to want to do is bring your voltage up a notch or two and then you're going to want to run some sort of stress test um, to make sure that your voltage is stable at the frequency that you currently have it set at i personally like i mentioned earlier like to use a to 64 for my stress test and i run it for an hour or two just to get a general idea that if it's um, to see if your system is stable at that frequency and voltage if it crashes then you're gonna have to bring your voltage up a little bit more and then rerun the test until it doesn't crash anymore now if you don't get the temperatures you want you want the temperatures even lower what you can do is take your cpu ratio and drop it again to like 39 which is 3.9 gigahertz and then lower your voltage even more what i found on the 3600 is that at 3.9 gigahertz at 1.15 volts you're stable and you basically get the same multi-core performance as if you're just sitting at stock everything and on top of all that on top of all that good stuff your temperatures drop about 20 c and that's with the stock cooler which is crazy but then this actually leads me to the trade-offs i mentioned earlier there are trade-offs by doing these methods right method one has literally no trade-offs that i could actually think of i really don't know if you if you can think of a trade-off for method one let me know in the comments below because i did a lot of testing on it i didn't have a trade-off other than you can't keep lowering your voltage which sucks but method two does have a couple if you've been following along during this video and you've been recording all the tests that you've been doing um you may have noticed the first trade-off and that's that you're going to be losing single core performance when you're using the second method well the question is why do you lose performance well when your cpu is at stock or you're even if you're using method one you're using the offset method um the chip can actually boost a single core higher than four gigahertz that you're setting in method two so even though you get better multi-core performance because all of your cores are running at like four gigahertz um and when you are at stock you know it only boosts up to four every so often especially on like a stock cooler your single core chip can't go above that four gigahertz when you're doing just like single core tasks so you actually lose a little bit of performance so if your chip could a stock could boost up to 4.1 when you're doing single core tasks you can no longer do that so you're actually limiting it which kind of stinks is it going to be noticeable while you're playing games no probably not maybe maybe like a little bit maybe a couple frames if that but i think it's still important to know so you guys know if you do a lot of single core tasks that you know that this could um, decrease your performance by a little bit the second trade-off is that you're going to be stuck at whatever voltage you set it at so if you set it at 1.2 volts it's going to always be at 1.2 volts and the question you're going to have is, is this bad for my system or my chip and the, the answer is like no people run um, all core overclocks consistently you know and they've been doing it for years now and to be honest i've actually overclocked almost every single cpu i've ever owned but the big thing here is that over time you might end up using a little bit more power than you would in the normal case but since the voltages are already super high on these chips you probably won't see like using more power over time but i still felt it was kind of worth mentioning to you guys if you guys have any other ways to improve your temperatures without swapping out your cpu cooler to like a better cpu cooler or sacrificing performance please let me know in the comments below i'm really curious because this is like a pretty important topic in my opinion you know there's not a lot of information on how to bring your temperatures down without getting a better cpu cooler and not everybody has the ability to get that hundred dollar all in one water cooler so i think this is a frustrating topic for a lot of people so if you have any other ways to bring your temperatures down without sacrificing performance i think everybody here that's going to be in the comments 
for this video are going to really appreciate it. I'll also be throwing all my findings that I had for the 3600 in the description box below. So you guys have them for reference. If you guys found this video helpful, please give me a solid thumbs up and consider subscribing for more tech content just like this. If you want to see more of my content that I have out there, um, I'll be putting some videos up right here for you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.